All right, um, so 365 days of horsemanship, day 14. Um, yeah, a wonderful way to mark two weeks of this project actually today. Um, I'm very refreshed after yesterday, after my, um, my kind of pause day where I just came and I did the minimum and I rested and took care of myself a little bit. And um, yeah, today I had a really great session with Mia. Um, I came up very much with the decision in mind that we were going to play in the arena. Um, and I went up to get her and she was on the hay. And it was, again, this idea of timing, you know, like I think so much of how the horses react to you when you arrive is really like the luck and the timing of the day. Um, like now that I'm doing this every single day, I don't really, I haven't really felt that what... <sighs> I think overall the consistency of always having a good day it has a positive impact but I don't really think that what you did specifically that or what so far what I did specifically the previous day um really seems to make any kind of large influence on then how we are the next day I would say the biggest factor at the moment is really just the luck and timing of the day like if she's in a place where she's sleeping she wants to sleep if she's in a place where she's interactive she's interactive and if she's in a place where she's on the hay then she's on the hay and that's what's important to her right now right so like learning to interrupt her during all of those different times of her day um is definitely definitely requires a different set of skills um for each time you know like if she's super interactive i don't really need to do anything i can just hold her and go um today wasn't like that um she was at the hay and i kind of played around a little bit with moving the hindquarters and getting her to look at me and it was just that like enough pressure to be annoying not enough pressure to kind of like physically force her to do anything so she could kind of still have the there's always like this window to say no um but it's it's not passive you know I'm doing something I am changing the environment around her um and after my lesson from last week I kind of tried to fix it up uh, to mix it up sorry and um yeah mix it up and just ask her different questions like once I got you know the looking to the left hind quarter a little bit um like once then you know then I would go to the other side or then I would like try to move her left shoulder with the line or come around the other side and move the right shoulder with the line um and and that seemed to be kind of working okay but we just basically still were like getting a little moment of like acknowledgement and then back to the back to the hay and I kind of decided that like maybe I wanted to try something a bit more so basically I just got in the way of her being in the hay so I didn't tell her like no I just literally made it impossible for her to get to the hay um because I would just like stand like in front of her she's like trying to get past me you know and then she's like walking off and I'm walking with her and then I'm like doing the same thing there just like you know just stopping her from like getting to it or from eating on the floor or anything so I'm just like walking like in the space where she's trying to eat um and it was interesting because I think you know she could have said no she could have really said no to the game and like cantered off and like left me completely and I think in that case I would have like reflected on that and made different choices and said okay today is a clear no where we really like don't want to play and we just want to do our own stuff and if that had been the case I'd have said okay that's fine I can change my plan to accommodate your needs um but I'm going to see today if I can ask you to to prioritize my needs in a way that is doesn't feel that still feels like we can communicate about it where I'm not just being like we're doing what I want to do it's like I want to do what I want to do I want to do what I want to do I want to do what I want to do you know like an annoying kid or something rather than like like a forceful you know dictator um and yeah and so I halted her in the end managed to halter her um where she sort of like acknowledged that you know basically the end result of this game was that she wasn't going to get to eat her hay um so she may as well come with me and she wasn't very happy about it when I halted her but then actually we walked down really nicely and I thought oh this is really nice and it's that same dichotomy that I've been I've been noticing now it, especially with with Mia is that she's she's more expressive about the fact that she doesn't want to come but then when she does come and we do play it's much better than it ever has been 
I think that's really interesting. I think it, it's all partly to do, I think, with her feeling like she has this space to express herself rather than just being tight the whole time. Or potentially, you know, she's been saying that the whole time and I've just been missing it, you know? So probably everything's improving. Um, but yeah, I brought her up and put her on her hay net, which is our nice little pattern that we have now. Um, so that if I'm bringing her up, that first experience that she has is really positive. Um, and I did one of her plaits and that was really nice and it felt really relaxed. Um, and then we went in the school. And the thing that I think sort of had been worrying me the most um, about this kind of new sort of very light, uh, very kind of slow journey that I've chosen with with the dominance side of it and, and playing in the arena and and kind of dominant like riding and things like that um, is I was concerned about how long it was going to take and how much time we were going to spend not doing anything and not moving specifically and um, not doing anything physical um and today we had a really dynamic session and it was only about 15 minutes and it was still mostly in walk but before it's been like we've been able to do a few steps of walk and then she's wanted to stop and think and even though we haven't done very much physically every session there's been a lot of thinking and licking and chewing and yawning and so i'm happy with the sessions and i feel like they're powerful for her and i feel like you know every day is just another brick right like it's just another brick you know build a whole house in a day you know every day is one brick right but today it really felt like it that we that she was just happier to move today with me that she didn't need so much time to stop and think and that was really gratifying and really um really reassuring for me um because that was what i was hoping would happen um that over time that she would become more comfortable um and more relaxed and more able to do more stuff with me and it wouldn't be so restricted so that was really nice to feel that way today and it really felt special and it really felt like a big improvement and so that was really nice um yeah we still stopped you know a fair bit and and thought about things and licked and chewed um and we still you know we asked a few questions but it really wasn't that many um still you know so it's like i'm basically still just walking around with her and just putting my hand either on her forequarters on her shoulder or um on her hindquarters and just asking her if while we're walking if she can walk with me soft to that pressure so she's just yielding a little bit to that pressure just yielding her neck a little bit i'm just asking just for that brace to go just that emotional brace where she's like i don't want to do it i don't want to do it i don't do it and then just like that little moment where she feels better about it um and i think the challenge is just not going too fast like it's such basic stuff and you know i kind of feel like all my life all i ever do is you know go go back over the basic stuff like a thousand thousand times um but I really do feel this time, like if I'm consistent with it, that I'll be able to build something really strong. And I've been really thinking today about this idea of the house, um, like the foundations for the house that you build. And I think, you know, for all these years, I've been building my bricks every session that I do. But I, you know, I wasn't doing this. I've never been this consistent. So between bricks, it's taking longer. And those bricks are kind of crumbling apart a little bit because they've not got other bricks next to them to kind of hold them all together. Um, not like really, you know, consolidating that much of my learning that often um, with them. And then in addition to that, you know, I've not been building my bricks out of such strong material, right? So then even though I'm doing these things over and over again, the, the doing of the action and the doing of the pattern is not so important as how you and the horse feel about what you're doing. Um, like it's really not about the pattern it's about the emotion it's about the connection right um and I, I was kind of thinking like I think you know if I'm thinking about my main ingredients for building my bricks every day the things that I really don't want to compromise on that that kind of need to happen every day the best day for me you know I need it to to be a good experience I think that's the thing that you just can't compromise on and I think you can allow a neutral experience where you don't really feel like, you know, you made any progress, but you also didn't really feel like you really, you know, messed up. And you can't, no, you know, every day is not going to be good. Sometimes you're going to make a mistake and that brick's going to be a bit crumbly, right? But if that's your, if that's your, you know, your rule and you're like, you know what, every day is a good experience, then you're guided then. As long as you're really disciplined about that, you're then guided by the experience of the horse, right? And And as long as you stay like alert and and focused on how the horse is actually feeling that every single day you can work towards that positive experience right 
they're making decisions that allow that whether or not that means you don't make it out the field whether or not that means that you slow it down or you change your plan or you do something different to what you wanted to do just making the priority having that good experience is actually really powerful i think if you do that consistently because that's the thing the horse is going to remember more than anything else you know it's like you don't remember every single conversation that you ever had with your friend but what you do remember is how those experiences made you feel and how you feel about that person. Like, I, you know, I don't know what I spoke about with my friend Chloe three months ago, but I know that I really love her and I can call on her in an emergency if I need her, you know, and that's based on the good feelings that I have every time I'm with her, right? And I think it's the same with the horses. And I think that's the really important thing that really gets remembered. Um, and the thing that really sets you up to, to have a positive attitude. Um, the second thing I think is that is really important um, is is to put that kind of relationship above your goals for the day. Um, like you can have a plan, but if that plan ends up not aligning with what turns up when you get there then you, you need to be flexible to that, you know? And it, that kind of links into having that good experience, right? Because I think if you're not flexible and you're not able to change your plan, then you're not going to have that positive experience, right? Um, and that's definitely how it's felt for me so far. And it's been really good to to be able to, to kind of consolidate that today um, and really feel that progression and have a really positive experience. Um, yeah, you know, so I worked a little bit with the with the line on and I took the halter off and I did some liberty and and again, you know, it was like we're just kind of running around together and the connection felt really nice and strong again like it did the other day um when I was playing with her and yeah, I just felt it just felt like do you know what? This might actually work. And you know, like not forgetting that I'm other than the halter and line, you know, I've got her at liberty, I've got no tools. You know, and and I really I can see how I could progress that to a place where I can do things with her, you know, like we can do a whole routine together to a song and, you know, and I can, I can see how I can get there now. Um, and that's really exciting prospect. That's a really exciting prospect. And it, it kind of puts a little bit of water in the bucket in the motivation bucket that I was talking about yesterday. My bucket was a little empty yesterday. Um, so today it's a little fuller. Um, and that's really nice and really needed. Um, so yeah, two weeks in and I definitely feel like I'm starting to reap the rewards. Um, and I really hope that it continues. Um, I'm still definitely nervous about in a couple weeks time, about three weeks time, um, I'm going to stop having this nine to five life um, and go back to the shift work. And that's going to be more challenging because there's going to be some days where it's just not going to be possible for me to put in the amount of time that I would like to have. Um, but I also think that that's where, that's where the freedom based training and that's where these more relaxed kind of goals and flexibility really come into their own because I think as long as I'm maintaining that relationship and, and coming up here and taking care of my needs and their needs and just being with them I think and having that positive experience you know within my bandwidth um is so important um and I think that that is yeah I think that that's going to be a good challenge and I think that learning how to do that is going to be really valuable um yeah I think the last thing I kind of want to talk about today is like such a long one today um and I haven't even talked about Lawrence yet um the last thing I kind of wanted to talk about today was which I think is another rule um I think that's my third rule is like working within both your bandwidth and your horse's bandwidth so like I was thinking a lot about the fact that I kind of feel like for a long time in a lot of ways most horses are working outside of their bandwidth. And when I say bandwidth, I mean what they can emotionally cope with. Um, and I think it's very easy because they're, because they can be very obedient, even, even the not obedient ones are like pretty obedient, really, when you think about it, you know, for a wild animal. Um, and obviously I know they're domesticated, but you know, still, right. Freedom, they have freedom of choice. They have, you know, cognition and the ability to make their own choices, um, and yeah, they're actually super obedient. And I think so it's very easy to miss that line where you're actually working beyond their bandwidth and they're doing something, but they're not okay with it. Um, not emotionally okay with it. And I think that 
doing things that are firstly emotionally okay for them and not putting any expectations on how small that thing might be. So at the moment, I'm spending a lot of time with Mia on these tiny things. It's like, is this okay with you? Is this okay with you? And she's like, it's not okay with me. And it's like, okay, well, like, but it's it's only just about not okay enough that we can still talk about it. I could have made her get on a circle today and, you know, trot 30 circles, count to 30 circles, whatever. And she'd have done it if I'd have, if I'd have told her to. You know, but it would have been outside of her bandwidth, right? Because she's not actually feeling happy about doing that thing. She's not actually really engaged emotionally in the action because she's just doing something that she doesn't want to do. And she's doing it because if she doesn't do it, something bad's going to happen. Um, and that's completely different from like feeling okay about doing something and being able to like interact while you're doing it. And I, so I think working within the horse's bandwidth, super important. And I'm really hoping that once the bandwidth for these like, like real you know, just those letters, right? This is the letters of the alphabet. You know, before you try and make words, you've got to, you've got to build letters. And there's literally those letters like, you know, can I touch you here? Can I move you there? Can you yield here? Can you like just those real basics? And I'm hoping that once we're feeling good about those things, as long as I make sure that I'm then, you know, sort of pushing the boundary slowly, slowly, and just allowing her to feel better and better about things that like the, the progression will just sort of like increase. Um, because suddenly she'll find that there's lots of things that she can now do that now feel okay because she's okay with the basics, right? Um, and I think the second thing is, you know, working within your own bandwidth, right? And I definitely, uh, in the past, I've definitely been guilty of this, um, of working outside of my bandwidth a lot. Um, and doing things that didn't feel right to me, not feeling confident enough um, to go with the right route. And also I think putting that pressure on myself in a way that was not helpful, um, you know, like yesterday was a prime example of a day where um, in the past, you know, when I had that low energy and that low motivation, I was tired. Even if I hadn't have ended up doing anything, I would have still punished myself for it. And in that way, I was working outside of my bandwidth because I was expecting something of myself that was not realistic. Um, whereas actually what happened yesterday is I came and I said, no expectations on me, no expectations on them. I'm just going to come. I'm going to turn up. I'm going to see what I can do and try and make a positive experience. And actually what happened was, is the more positive the experience became, the more energized I became and the more I was able to interact and the more that we were able to do something together. Right. And I was really pleased with how that turned out. Um, but I managed to do it in a way that was working within my bandwidth. I found something that I could do, which was, you know, I mean, I didn't even get changed out of my work clothes yesterday. I just put a big coat on and went straight down to the field because it was out of my bandwidth, you know, to get dressed for the yard, get changed, you know, to do anything. Um, I just literally did the bare minimum I had to do and said, I'm going to go and stand in the field and that's as far as I can go. And I went and I did that and just working within my bandwidth made it possible for me to then stretch that comfort zone yesterday. Um, and I actually found that that was a positive experience. And I think it's the same for the horses. So, um, so yeah, so that's my three rules. Make it a positive experience. Um, work within your bandwidth. And, well, I guess the second one is kind of pretty much the same. So maybe there's just two rules. God, can you imagine how much better I'm going to be at these videos in a year as well? Oh my God, I'm going to look back at this stuff and say to myself, like, what were you doing? But you know what? Learn by doing, right? absolutely learn by doing like things don't have to be perfect you don't have to be putting out the most amazing product in the world to want to create it um that's what i'm kind of trying to do here um so yeah went to see lawrence after i saw mia gave him a little groom which was lovely um yeah i met some of his needs after yesterday he was really trying to ask me for massages and scratches and grooming and and i just didn't have enough energy yesterday and so today i really kind of wanted to give him that um which i did um and it was lovely um yeah so a good day all round i think a good day all round and um, we'll see what tomorrow brings